and welcome to Cinemastrophe. I'm Don Perignon, saving you from getting ripped off. Wow. Where do we begin with this one? Well, let's start with the fact that after searching for a couple of days, I could find little about this film other than a few reviews, the name of the actors, most of which seem to do nothing after this movie, and you'll understand why, and the name of the director, who I wish didn't do anything after this movie. Boy, my production staff sure knows how to pick out some gems for me, don't they? Oh, bet! Oh, oh! The movie starts out with one of those the following footage texts. Well, that's never a good sign. They might as well put the following movie will leave you with a disappointing ending because it happens every fucking time. We're in Louisiana where a ghost hunting team is at the site of a possible demonic infestation. It's here we find out why most of these people didn't do any other movies after this one. Dead hour has begun. Echo, find out what you can about the spirit. Please. A spirit dwelling here is a female. I can't quite catch her name, but she's, she's angry, very angry about something. That's just a producer's reaction for being convinced to putting money into this thing you're sensing. The ghost is actually laughing at you all. The little girl of the house is possessed and happens to be the only decent actor here. Fucking pedophile! Can't fuck her! You like that? Are you like a little boy like all the other faggot marines? I'm sure glad they had this little girl translate those ellipses. Otherwise, I would have thought she called them a pedophile. Ah, poor thing. The first period is always the roughest. The priest performs an exorcism, and as the demon leaves the little girl, it knocks over the leader of the group named Rain. Well, time for that aftermath debriefing where the psychic of the group named Echo. I bet these Ghostbusters love riding in that Echo. Explains that it wasn't a demon, but a very, very angry ghost. Did she sense anything else? Just that she's angry, she wants to get out of this house and where her husband is. Wow. She can't even remember the script. Look, you can see her reading it from her lap. You can even see her put it on the floor when she gets up. Oh God, the kid was right. The killer is a tire. After they check the house, finding in fact that the ghost is gone, we're treated to a flashback explanation of what got Rain interested in the paranormal. If it was to get laid, you're in the wrong line of work, sweetheart. Unless you're a necrophiliac. That's just Howie Mandel being annoying while wearing weird blue makeup. Little monsters, because God hates you! This leads to a super flashy intro where we find out that this is a fictional documentary of a fictional TV show.
No, no, no. It's a fake documentary about a fake TV show. But the show's not real. Because it's fake. No, that's not... You're fucking with me, aren't you? The next case is in Oklahoma to look at a haunted house. A real haunted house, not a carnival attraction. Although that would be way more entertaining. The father of the house tells the group that the problem started in his daughter's bedroom. After a series of events, he had the house blessed, but it had no effect. Maybe he shouldn't have hired this guy to do it. Do you know if you take two ripe bananas, you put them in a bowl, and you put some sugar, and you go ahead and bake it for 400, you can go ahead and pull it out and have yourself banana bread, hallelujah! After some investigating, they find out that the spirit is a Native American, which is why the blessing didn't work. And even though the spirit is not malevolent, it will do anything to stay in this realm. So now we have to figure out how it got in here and how to send it back. So you have a harmless spirit that won't get violent unless threatened to be sent back to the other realm. And your plan is to send him back to the other realm. I am the smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. So they send Jennifer Aniston here, who was clairvoyant, up to the girl's room to find out what let the spirit into this realm, where she finds a handmade wooden Ouija board. Tor! Oh. Tor, are you okay? <laughs> The priest saves her three times, earning two cleric ranks, and we get an explanation of why this is happening. You know what happened, don't you? It came in the mail. You thought it was a present. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Why is it the children are the best actors in this film? Did the casting director blow their budget on the best child actors they could find and then hire their college roommates as cheap labor? Yo, bro, I need your help filming a movie, man. What's in it for me, bro? Uh, pizza party? Awesome sauce! I'm in, bro! This explains everything. See, the way to rid yourself of a Ouija board spirit is to mail the board to somebody else. And then, if they play the board, the spirit's silenced. To get rid of the spirit, they have to cut the board up into seven pieces and burn it. Unfortunately, this guy gets axe happy and cuts the board up into eight pieces. And because they fucked up, this happened a week later. The third case is haunted tunnels under a college. When they get there, Rain says she can feel the dead all around the place, while the others cannot. That's just your audience. They've all died of boredom. We get a story from the janitor about a college professor named Abrils who got a student pregnant, so he lured her down into the tunnels and shot her, then himself. Although the woman survived the attack, she lost the baby and was so badly injured she could never have children again. Coat 45, the original after morning pill. The tech guy displays a new toy called the ghost box, which allows ghosts to talk back to them. I have a ghost box too. Would you like to see how it works? Are there any spirits here? Come on, there's got to be at least one. So many people have died in this room. Wait, wait, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Of course you didn't, because it's the stupidest fucking thing I ever heard of. They look up the name Ambrose and discover that it's the devil's son, whose job is to manage many versions of hell where spirits wait before going to actual hell. So in other words, the DMV. So these tunnels, are those those holding cells? Yes, this is their final step before they go to hell. Are you sensing any spirits out here? Mm, no. I don't understand how you can, since all six of you are sitting right there, so clearly two of them are holding the fucking cameras. 
After setting up, Rain and Echo start exploring when they run into a ghost named Benjamin. At first, he's playful with them. He's playing this for us. Really? Benjamin, that was wonderful. Can you do that again? Kind of hard to play it again when he's still fucking playing. Benjamin gets scared and tells them to leave because Ambrose is coming. Naturally, they don't listen, and all hell breaks loose. While the rest of the team are being killed, Aniston and the priest discover that the ghost from the beginning not only has been in rain since then, but is also the woman that Abrils got pregnant. What a twist! She rants that she wants to be released from Rain's body to get revenge on Abrils, which Aniston and the priest manage to do, but end up killing Rain in the process. Hi, Benjamin. This movie is a new level of suckage. I could look past the bad acting if everything else wasn't such utter crap. This movie was so boring. Even the exciting scenes are boring. There was one, just one intense scene, and that was only because they happened to use the right camera angle at the right time. They don't even give us any resolution. Does the chick ever get her revenge? Does anyone ever find the bodies? Do they close the college? Who knows? The writer certainly didn't. There were some good, simple, practical effects throughout the film, but it wasn't enough to make this interesting. It's not even enough to keep you awake. But if you're looking for a painful way to commit suicide, then this is the movie for you. I'm Don Perignon, saving you from getting ripped off. Here's one, oh, back to the first!